Thank you. We are thrilled that you are here. I'm Kate Grusing. I'm the Managing Director of Sapphire Partners in London, England. I've spent my career in financial services. And it is such a rare treat to be surrounded by this many amazing senior women. If, if I'm too loud or I'm too soft, will someone wave at me? OK. Um, the women on this panel are exceptional for many reasons. But unfortunately, in the world of finance, whether it's insurance, asset management, investment banking, retail banking, women tend to come in at very high numbers at the entry level. And then unfortunately, they don't tend to rise up the ladder at the same rate as their peers. Well, the four women you see, to my, the two to my left and the two to my right, are incredible role models and pioneers at, at not just at their firms, but in the industry. So I am incredibly delighted they're here. And we're going to hear a bit from each of them about both their careers, their organizations, and what they're going to do differently in the future. I'm going to start to my left with Catherine Garrett-Cox. Um, Catherine started her new job as uh, chief executive of Gulf Arab Banks on Monday. And she's still here, even more amazing. Um, she's been on the board of Deutsche Bank for seven years, and prior to her current CEO job, she was the chief executive of Alliance Trust, one of a tiny number of female chief executives in the investment management arena worldwide. Catherine is going to kick off by sharing her perspectives on what it is that has gotten her to where she is so far. And we know women typically aren't very good at blowing their own trumpets or bragging, but I've made the women on this panel promise that they're going to do that. Catherine. Thank you, Kate. Well, you're absolutely right. When uh, you suggested that we would kick off with this question, I said, oh, no, because I, I agree. I think women generally don't talk about their successes. So. Um, Kate asked us to speak in a very personal way about our own histories and um, where we've ended up where we are. And um, so from my perspective, I think I have been incredibly fortunate. And Kate said, what is the main key to uh, the success that I've had in financial services? And I think the honest truth of it is that I've always had the great fortune to work with people who believed in me. And I think that there is an incredible sense of that in the way I now conduct my own life and business. So when I was 26, uh, which now seems ridiculously young, I was put in charge of an enormous team in London of an asset management business. And I grew it from virtually nothing. And we ended up run, running probably about five, six billion uh, dollars. And we absolutely uh, whipped the Americans at their own game in that we were running North American equity money and for a series of about five years we outperformed most of the managers on Wall Street. So it was an incredible run. Uh, it was during the early 90s and I spent a lot of time in the valley when companies like Cisco and Microsoft and others really hadn't seen any British investors. I remember going to some very strange places like Boise, Idaho, uh, where I went to visit a tech company and they looked in complete incredulity because they'd never seen a UK investor at all. So that was really how I started my career. And I was then put on to my first public company board in my 30s. And as Kate said, um, I've been on, uh, on the board of Deutsche Bank as a non-executive for some years now. But I think if I could really try to condense the key ingredients that I have felt have really contributed to where I am today, it would be three things. The first would be relevance, the second would be resilience, and the third would be responsibility. And just very briefly, I think relevance is really important, particularly looking at the cross-generational world we live in and the fact that we've got the development of digital and new technologies, and you have to constantly change and be adaptive and flexible in order to survive, because otherwise you'll just become a dinosaur. And honestly, there are a lot of dinosaurs out there. Um, in terms of resilience, uh, not everything I've done in my career has been straightforward. I'm probably the one that picks the tough gigs. Um, and I do that for a reason, because I think you should feel drawn to an organization where you believe you can make a difference. 
you know, to walk in every day to just, to, as we were saying, do the same thing uh, with the same old spreadsheets, walk out, would just be incredibly boring. And I rather like a quote from Maggie Thatcher, which says that women are a bit like tea bags. You find out how strong they are when you put them in hot water. And um, she's actually a bit of a role model for me. And that's probably quite a lot about how I shaped my own career. And then very lastly, responsibility. So we heard a lot in some of the previous morning sessions about the need for organizations to find their social purpose. And for a lot of uh, developments and innovation around sustainability and things like fashion. Well, my passion is putting sustainability and responsibility into the world of investment. So in my previous role, we built it up to become one of Europe's largest uh, responsible investors. And I think that that is a really critical thing, that you have to foster from the top a sense of social purpose. Because otherwise, in finance, why on earth are we here? We are here to make people's lives better, to help them build a more sustainable financial future. And um, I think if we can keep doing that, then we must be doing something right. Thank you, Catherine. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Valerie Moradian. She's a senior banker at HSBC. She's been in France for her career in financial services over 25 years. Previously, she was at um, ABN AMRO and RBS. Valerie also leads the Women's Network for HSBC in France. And HSBC, as you probably know, is one of the world's largest banks. Valerie, what would you attribute your ability to get to where you are and to have survived at three such complex organizations and now to be in such a senior role at HSBC? Thank you. I, I will take the subject a bit from uh, different angles and, uh, and, uh, and share with you uh, something uh, more personal. I've always been in uh, investment banking which is quite a male-dominated uh, environment and a very tough env environment. And I must admit that um, until I was 40, I was not really admitting that there was a subject of gender or that I need to do anything more than doing my job correctly. And even if I'm a mother of three boys, uh, I remember very well that uh, when I uh, was pregnant of my third one, I only shared it with the bank when I was uh, already uh, six months, uh, because I wanted to make sure that I will not be kicked off of very senior RFP or meetings with clients, because that was really what uh, was driving me. The, the turning point, in fact, was when I returned from maternity leave on my third uh, child and I uh, followed a one-week session on authentic woman leadership. And that was really, you know, the starting point where within my mind, I switch angles and I started to think, how can I make, you know, my gender position uh, something positive, something on which I will work on, and something that at the end of the day will differentiate myself uh, from, uh, from my, the other colleague. So at that time, I think I've been um, coming very um, authentic, not trying to hide what I am, but building on the strength. I'm, um, I'm very passionate, very engaged, and always trying to think about what could be the, the angle or the angles that others may have not found in order to, uh, in order to uh, move my way and uh, fulfill my, uh, my client needs. So uh, this is the way I have done it. This is also what I would like to share with, um, with, uh, with others. This is why also when I joined HSBC four years ago, I decided that I will take the time, even if it is always a challenge, to, uh, to share, to engage, and uh, to make women trust that, uh, they can, um, that they can succeed, but also making sure that uh, there's no complacency at senior level, and that with my position, I will also help uh, those commitments to be uh, to be taken and and to be uh, followed. Thank you, Valerie. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Dioni Lebo. 
Dione is one of only three women on the executive committee at Societe Generale. She is their chief risk officer, which as you can imagine is an incredibly important position in any global bank, especially a bank with the size and scale of Sokgen. Dione had a formative experience earlier in her career where she was the CEO of Sokgen for North America and has had truly a global international career. Um, Dione, what would you attribute to your ability to have risen to one of the highest roles at a French bank or a, a global bank? And we'd be interested to hear your reflections. Okay, I'm very glad actually to, to share uh, my experience because I really uh, believe in uh, uh, transmitting and uh, uh, and uh, if others can learn from the lessons uh, we learned uh, and uh, accelerate their career it would be great. I think what made a big difference for me was that uh, I started uh, 30 years ago at uh, Sogen in structured finance in a business which was uh, growing, which was uh, a very new business and which uh, really demanded uh, innovation and uh, people who were able to bring uh, new ideas. So this had two consequences for me. One, I grew with the business because uh, I was able to uh, develop uh, this activity. And second, uh, it helped me also to, um, uh, to be, uh, in a way, assessed on my results. I think it's very important because uh, women are not that good in uh, promoting their, uh, themselves or their achievements. So having your clients uh, or your p &L or your results speak for your uh, merits is very important. And it was all the more important that um, the way I was achieving it was a little bit different uh, from others were doing. Uh, for instance, uh, I really believed a lot in uh, cooperation, in uh, joint ventures, in really uh, working together to bring uh, the best expertise uh, a bank has to the clients. This meant uh, work across the silos, and silos in investment banking, and Valérie knows that, are very strong, actually. And uh, people in uh, corporate investment banking you were men, and uh, they tend to be very territorial. So really doing things differently, uh, cooperating and uh, uh, creating these uh, JVs and being successful, I think uh, opened the eyes of others that there is maybe another way uh, which also works. And, uh, and in a way, uh, opened also, I think, uh, the avenue for other women to get to this type of uh, positions. And the third thing which was very important for me was really to stay uh, true to my values, really uh, be uh, myself. Uh, it's a very demanding uh, industry, very demanding jobs. Uh, it's sometimes brutal, uh, it's aggressive, but uh, if you uh, play with your own uh, rules, your values, you stick to yourself, it gives you a lot of strength because you really do what you believe in. Uh, you remain yourself, uh, and also I think uh, it works. Actually, it works because what uh, is different in uh, in what you are is also what makes you special at a certain point. And the last thing which really worked for me was uh, to take risks. I always say, and I'm a CRO now, uh, I always say that the biggest risk in life is not to take risks. Uh, it's very important to take risks. So I accepted uh, positions uh, which were a little bit. Uh, a stretch for me at certain times, and I accepted them when I was still very uh, successful in what I was doing. And it's a risk, because uh, you know, when you are successful and you're doing well, uh, stretch yourself and uh, do something different. I moved from structured finance to coverage, for instance. It's a challenge for you. You feel a special um, responsibility and pressure as a woman to get this type of uh, roles and promotion, because if you fail, uh, People could think that it's because you are a woman, not just because you know it's a challenging job. But I accepted to take this the risk, and a few times, and then I accepted to, to take another risk to go to the uh, U.S. and be CEO of uh, Americas. And each time, I learned a lot. I uh, expanded my skill set, and I became more and more relevant also to the clients, uh, to the bank, to my teams. So I really think these uh, risks uh, pay for yourself, and uh, they pay for the bank. So. I think you have to uh, dare. It's, I think, a very good title of this seminar. Thank you. Last, I'd like to introduce Lan Yan. Lan has the most exceptional career. She started her career in France, um, where effectively she had the first chapter as a banker and a lawyer, 
Um, she has spent the last half of her career in China, where she heads investment banking at Lazard for China. She also sits on the board of Carrefour, and she's also just published her first book. Salon really brings an international and especially an Asian perspective, which is relevant to so many of our businesses. Lon, tell us what's your perspective on how you've been able to get to where you are. Thank you, Kate. I'm very happy. First of all, I should say I'm really very happy to join the Women's Forum. It's uh, almost, it, it, this time it's my eighth time uh, to participate to Women's Forum. And uh, a little story. Um, so Women's Forum this time is the six, uh, 13th session. And um, 15 years ago, I met uh, the founder of Women's Forum, Odu Duan. And uh, I was in China. She came and she said, Lan, if I launch a platform for women to exchange ideas, do you think it's uh, interesting for Chinese women? I said, yes, I 200% support you. And uh, one year and a half later, so I got an invitation for the first women's forum. So I think this networking today here is very, very important for all of us, no matter in which sector you are working. Uh, the networking also, now I think about it, it's very interesting. I, like uh, uh, Kate said, I was 20 years French lawyer practicing in Paris and then in Beijing. How can I, you know, how, sometimes people ask me, uh, uh, why you change and how can you, you, you dare to change from a, a totally career change, from a legal lawyer's career into bankers, banking career? It's fin finally today, I think it's due to the Women's Forum. <laughs> I met someone here and we became friend and then the friend and friend introduced me to make a presentation at Lazar in New York but this is the reason why the whole story happened so after 20 years being lawyer so I I was invited six years ago to be head of the uh, uh, Greater China Lazar I was hesitate finally like uh, our friend said, sometimes in the life you need to take risks. And uh, so finally I decided to change. I was facing a huge challenge because it's a really new sector for me. But what is not new is China because I worked already a uh, long, long time in China as a, for foreign investment in China as a French lawyer. So, I, so my mission was to set up a Greater China team, to develop a client network, and also to promote Lazar brand name in China. I still remember back a few, uh, well, I mean, uh, six, seven years ago, so uh, I tried to find Lazar in China to cooperate for M&A project, but they were not there. So, so the challenge uh, was um, huge. But uh, I think it's really the, the most important thing is that you have your confidence to do and uh, also you need to get support in your network. So I'm lucky enough to have a French female partner at Lazar Paris. So she come to join me in China. So both of us develop together this network in China and the team in China. So today, I'm very proud of my team because in Lazar Greater China team, we have 65% uh, of senior position are women. Uh, <laughs> and of course, I should say, they, are, they get their position promoted uh, totally uniquely on their merit. This is very important. And sometimes I lead a, a woman, a female banker team to meet our client. And the joke is, they said, oh, uh, Madame Yen, it's not, no more Lazar brothers. In China, it's Lazar sisters. <laughs> and uh, so I think my um, takeaway is that, um, first of all, 
you should dare to take risks. I totally agree with you. Secondly, you should have you should have your confidence on your ability to do. And uh, the third is uh, you need also absolutely to get support in your network, in your company, from the senior uh, position uh, people. And finally, I think we also, as a woman, we need to have confidence to ask for which we deserve. This is very important. Elon, hold on to the microphone. Now, the, the four women up here represent many of the world's biggest financial institutions. And together, the five of us have been working in financial services, if my math is right, um, over 120 years. So there's a lot of expertise up here. Lon, um, what, and I'm gonna ask each of you the same question quickly. What have you seen the things that Lazard and the organizations you've worked at do to make a difference? Because all of us are here because we think women are important to have more in the world of finance, but it's happening too slowly. So what, what are the two or three things that your organization has done that have truly had impact? So, Lazar, I think uh, uh, the first um, uh, thing very important is uh, since one year in our Lazar, global Lazar board, we have 30% of women as a board member. I think it's important. Since a long, long time, we, have only, we had only one woman. If you have uh, two, three, four, more than three women in the board, you have a voice. And we notice the woman director always pay naturally attention to the woman development, professional development in your company. This is the first thing, very important. Secondly, Lazar senior, uh, our CEO and the senior leadership started to take active initiative on diversity, on workplace initiative. So, because we notice in the financial sector, what is important, of course, first of all, it's at a recruiting level. So now we have, uh, among the candidates, we have a requirement, at least uh, from a very junior, uh, from the first year uh, analyst level, we need to have at least 40% of uh, female candidates. This is important. And then you have to ensure your pipeline. You have to, get to um, promote the talented woman uh, in your organization. So we have uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 and then this woman uh, bankers are need to be coached and uh, to be encouraged. So the program in Lazar today, we have, uh, first of all, networking. Lazar Woman Leadership Networking, uh, it's very actively uh, promoted globally speaking and regionally speaking. So we, we organize conferences, trainings, and uh, also um, uh, some, um, you know, uh, interaction with other women's networks. So for me, in Hong Kong, in China, I launched a Half Sky <laughs> Club. Uh, because in China, uh, a famous saying is that women uh, hold half of sky. So my Half Sky um, uh, network composed of uh, not only Lazar senior women, I, I ask our junior level bankers also join me. And then we have a senior women in Hong Kong in different uh, sectors, industry, finance, accounting, law firm. So they can get uh, uh, inspiration and uh, they can have role model. I think it's very important. Dioni, same question. Okay. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, for this type of change to happen, you need a very committed uh, leadership. So C the CEO of Société Générale, uh, Frédéric Oudéa, is very uh, determined, very committed. And you really need uh, this tone from the top. And you need a lot of uh, perseverance uh, because there is a lot of resistance uh, uh, for, for change. Uh, what we then uh, did, we launched a lot of things. Uh, one, uh, we created many years ago uh, a diversity board. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the uh, purpose of this board was really to uh, identify uh, levers 
uh, barriers, but um, most importantly levers uh, for uh, progression of uh, women in, uh, in the company. So we started, for instance, implementing uh, um, strategic talent identification, and we uh, have uh, today more than 40% of our strategic talents uh, are women. We hire 50% of women, by the way, so we are really 50-50 uh, 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 at uh, entry level. Uh, we have uh, also uh, made it uh, mandatory that uh, for uh, succession planning, uh, we always uh, identify at least one uh, female candidate for the top positions of the bank in the uh, top five successors, uh, potential successors. At the beginning when we did that, uh, and we put uh, the, uh, the, um, the name in red so we can really see it, and if there is no red, people have to go back to the drawing board and uh, redo it again. Uh, when we started doing that, uh, it was always the same names appearing in red uh, and only one name. Now we really have uh, easily uh, three, uh, two or three women among the five in the succession position. So this makes me uh, optimistic. On uh, the hiring side, also what we uh, try to do, because in some uh, of the areas, uh, it's really, uh, it requires a lot of uh, analytic uh, and quantitative skill set. So it's mainly engineers and in France, uh, Top engineer schools have only 20% of women. So we make a special effort in attracting uh, these uh, women from the uh, engineer schools. I think it's quite important that this pipe uh, builds up. Uh, we also work uh, a lot on uh, gender bias. There is, uh, because actually I think, uh, you know, we, uh, it's uh, not enough to convince uh, women that uh, they have to uh, dare and take risks. Uh, they have to, and I really think that they have to act uh, and be their own uh, ally in, in, in breaking the barriers. But you have to educate uh, men and uh, really educate them on gender biases because very often they don't even realize that uh, they are bi biased. I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was uh, you know, in my early uh, stages in, in my career, uh, there was a, a great position which opened up, which was uh, in, in New York, and I really uh, thought at that time that I really filled absolutely all uh, the requirements for the job and I just learned that uh, another guy was given the job so I went to see uh, my boss at that time and I said you know how come I was not even considered for that position and he said oh sorry I didn't even realize that I could uh, think about you for the job because uh, would your husband follow you in New York so then uh, you know it opened my eyes I realized that uh, sometimes uh, the men who make the decisions, they have their own biases, which are, uh, you know, a woman cannot have a, an international position or cannot have a job which requires a lot of traveling, and they make decisions for you. So this, I think you cannot uh, let this happen. So educating uh, on uh, biases uh, and really uh, letting uh, people know that uh, women are adult enough to make uh, decisions for themselves and uh, and discuss this with their husband, this exactly the same way as a, a man would do uh, uh, for his uh, family uh, life. So I think uh, very important to, uh, to, to work on gender biases. And last, of course, we have a women's network who has been extremely active, uh, was also part of the uh, founding uh, members. So it's been uh, more than 10 years. Uh, and it's very important because uh, this network organizes mentoring events, they make proposals, uh, they uh, really uh, focus a lot uh, for many years uh, in, uh, on this course and you have to be very focused, very determined to make this happen. And Valerie, please. Yeah. So I think that um, uh, HSBC first time came from a you know the business angle, and I I want to uh, to use a quote of our CEO Stuart Gulliver, who's saying, "I'm passionate about diversity because I want my colleagues to be themselves when they come to work, and I want our millions of customers around the world to see themselves in HSBC." So I think this is a, this is a, a real. Um, this, this then, you know, percolate within all the organization is that if we want to uh, fulfill our strategic ambition, we need also to have a strategy regarding a lot of different things, but among which the gender diversity. And as such, uh, HSBC has decided to set up targets in, in terms of number of uh, women in a senior leadership position. 
So uh, the group has uh, the target of 30% of uh, women by 2020 and 35% by 2025. At group level, we are approximately at uh, 25, 26%. We are a bit above in France. We are significantly above in Asia. And we are not so good in the UK. Uh, so uh, therefore, you know, when you're setting up those targets, obviously you want them, you want to achieve them. So the way to achieve them is also to engage, you know, at all level of the organization, the managers, in order for them to, um, to take action uh, to, uh, to reach that objective. And that has been then, you know, cascaded down in all the scorecards of uh, the, um, quite below uh, all the level of the, of the management. What we, I mean, we have done a lot of things, you know, as it was already said, but what I think we are paying a, a lot of attention also is about communication and about role model and to make sure that, you know, uh, women and men, because we need to engage men also in our journey, are not thinking that promoting women is something exceptional or something they have to do in order to fulfill their target. But this is the natural step. And if there is somebody that has all, you know, the talent and the skills for the job, and it happens to be a woman, then, then let's do it. So that also, is, you know, gives a lot of confidence uh, among a lot of other things, you know, by being uh, flexible at work, by having uh, networks, by having uh, training on bias and a lot of uh, different things. But at the end of the day, I think it's, uh, it's also about, you know, uh, sharing why we want that to be achieved and why it is important for our strategy, for our client to achieve that goal. Um, I know we're running pretty short on time, Kate, so I will give um, a, just a few thoughts in terms of what I've observed successful companies get right. Uh, the first would be that you hire on merit. Actually, no woman wants to be put in a job if she thinks that she's been put in there as a token. I, I would die if I thought I was a token female on any board. So hire on merit, hold managers to account on the diversity of their teams. Uh, and if you can build it into their KPIs and hook it into compensation, even better. And then I think the third thing I have observed really works well, and I always try to do, is to encourage um, the ladies that I've worked with to sit on non-executive boards as soon as they can. Even if it's a charitable board or a foundation, it just gives you a different perspective when you're sitting the other side of the table and it also creates the confidence that we've been speaking about that you can bring a lot to a boardroom discussion. So I'm optimistic that these four women all have the potential to be CEOs of big financial services organizations in the future. Catherine started a new job four days ago as the CEO of her bank in the UK, but I'm betting on these four women to be the CEOs of global banks. So I've asked them to sum up by saying when they become CEO, what one or two things they are going to do to try and accelerate the progress of women in finance. Catherine, can you go first? Thank you. Well, I'm hoping to stick with my current CEO role for slightly longer than four days. Um, but I think my priority has always been to encourage more women into asset management. Um, we talk about finance very generally, asset management is relatively underrepresented, uh, and I think it's all about finding young talent. I try as much as I can to recruit young female interns so they can come and have a look. They can look at us, we can look at them. Um, I try on balance to have gender parity when you're recruiting graduates. So I think you've got to start young and build up from the bottom, and that is going to be my mission. Okay, I was a bit thinking of the same mission, which was that, uh, <laughs> which was that I think that I would work on um, on the talent management and making sure that we are building up the pipeline for the future. I think this is really uh, one of our main challenge. 
obviously we are in an industry that is transforming itself dramatically that will be disruptive by all those new technology and we need to be able to attract talent out of which women talent obviously and to retain them and not only to uh, earn 50 percent when uh, of uh, when they start just after university, but that 10 years after, we still have that pool of 50% women. Um, actually, when I described all the things uh, we are doing and still it doesn't work, uh, it means that there is something which is uh, missing. So I would definitely, for uh, a period of time, uh, make it uh, a business objective with specific targets to have uh, more women and uh, indeed I think 30% uh, uh, minimum uh, is, uh, is the right target and hopefully 50% uh, in a few years. So really making uh, objectives, uh, clear objectives, public objectives uh, and, uh, and really uh, hold accountable uh, business managers uh, for achieving these objectives on, uh, on women diversity. And second, I would definitely work uh, also towards uh, women because I really think uh, it's very important that uh, uh, women uh, get into the finance industry. I think it's a very exciting uh, industry. There is uh, uh, always uh, something happening and it's uh, an industry in deep transformation. So it's really the time for women uh, to uh, join this industry and uh, because they can make an impact. When there is change, you can be part of the change. And uh, I really think there is no better time than joining, uh, being a woman in this industry than now. 30 years ago, it was a big challenge. I really think that now it's a great opportunity. Um, I think if um, something I need to do, it's uh, I will not only, of course, to oh, sorry. Uh, to um, uh, look at uh, at a recruiting level, but I think it's very important to fix uh, um, some uh, good um, uh, uh, policy on uh, retention and promotion. So I think it's, um, it could be very interesting and important to set up a sponsorship system. So also invited our senior management and male colleagues, senior male colleagues in the leadership position to coach and sponsor the women. They are already at a, developed at a certain level but they always have glass ceiling there. So we need to have a strong sponsorship and uh, to promote the woman to the top level of leadership. This could give more role model to the younger generation to show them as a woman, as a female in the financial sector, you can make it. Well, I Every single one of you listening will be touched by different financial services firms. You'll have a mortgage provider. You might have a retail bank. I would bet a lot of you have several credit cards in your wallet. And you have more power than you realize. So I think it's also important that not just the women up here in leadership roles, but all of you exercise your power, whether it's as a consumer and looking at the organizations that you're banking with or you're investing with, as well as an, as an investor. And ask your relationship manager. Likewise, if you are in a business that works on a business level with other financial services firms, understand your supplier better because it's only all together that we're going to make this unbelievably important sector um, more accountable and more successful. And the women up here have the, the key themes that I would hope you would take away are the importance of targets, the importance of CEO commitment, role models. You know, These four women are at the very top of their game at some of the biggest organizations, but they're also making sure there are role models beneath them. Networks, both formal and informal, and it's wonderful hearing Lon's story about how she got into banking because of something like the Women's Forum. Um, KPIs, the strategic talent planning, so looking at promotion, looking at why people have left, um, and certainly unconscious bias training. But um, I'm more optimistic than I've ever been in my 30 years of working in finance, seeing the caliber of women 
coming in um, in my job as a search consultant, but also the caliber of women such as on my left and my right, leading these big, complex, incredibly systematic and important organizations. So I'm afraid we need to draw it to a close. I appreciate your listening and taking away from this panel what you're each going to do differently. And please join me in thanking our panelists.